Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and today we have got to talk about the PlayStation 5. So, well, we're going to talk about a few things right now. So, um, PlayStation has decided to continue making the PlayStation 4 all through the year of 2022. Uh, their reasoning for that is to try to keep people in the PlayStation ecosystem. Dang, man. I would have loved to have been that dude in the room like a fly on the wall when the moment they realized that the uh, that the Xbox Series S is definitely going to eat into their little PlayStation market one way or another. So look at this, okay? There's, there's a reason why I have my Xbox Series S right here on the screen for you to check out. So if you want to come with me for a minute and have a look at things. So, <laughs> This is pretty interesting, man. The PlayStation 5 is... Well, the PlayStation 5 is still kind of hard to make. You know, it's a little bit tough to get. I don't necessarily feel that way. I mean, I was pretty easy to get my PlayStation 5. It was pretty easy to get a Series X. It was pretty easy to get a Series S. I don't necessarily know. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you've got the money, you should be able to pick one of these up pretty fairly easily. So... There was, um, there, there's a little bit of speculation, you know, that, I mean, because Xbox's Phil Spencer said that the Xbox um, Series X and S is selling better than any previous console generation. So, if you look at the numbers for Xbox uh, 360, they were 10 million by this time, and if you look at Xbox One, they were just over 12 million at this time. So, that puts that number, in my opinion, like, 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 hear me out on this, okay? That puts that number anywhere above 12 million, all the way up to 24 million. But I'm going to be a little more conservative, and I'm going to say maybe they built, maybe 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 they built like eight million freaking Xbox Series Xs, and maybe they build another you know eight to ten million Xbox Series Ss. Now you can literally go out and find an Xbox Series S pretty much pretty much easy like you you can see those actually at stores on the shelves xbox series s x not not so much so that could possibly mean that i'm thinking i'm thinking maybe xbox's numbers are at because when okay when spill when phil spencer's talking about this he's like we're selling better than, than than we've ever had you know and i mean like when you're excited like that i mean 12 million 12 million was that was that was that point for xbox one 12 million of those things out the door and if you're enthusiastic about this is the best it's ever sold do you really think they've only sold 12 million freaking xboxes i would say that number might be closer to you know 8 million 8 to 10 million in xbox series s s um xbox x because if you look at this look at think about this k i have one everybody i know that i that i work with has one some of those people that i work with have two of them two series x's that they've gotten and we live in Utah, Utah, America. There are 50 states in America. They've already sold over a million consoles, Xbox consoles in places like the UK. They've already sold a million consoles in freaking Japan. Being the fastest Xbox ever sold in all three of those places. In all three of them. So that right there alone should tell you that maybe maybe we're a little bit higher maybe xbox has been putting out more consoles than anybody actually thought because i mean this is this is what would make sense to me they know that xbox series x is going to be a popular item and a lot of people are going to want to buy that so they they produced you know i i would say they've put within a year they've probably put at least a minimum of eight million out of the out 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 xbox series x's minimum eight million and then you look at Series S. They've probably done at least another 10 million of those consoles. So that would put them closer to like 18 million shipped. And they're still shipping more. So let's think about it, man. Let's let's look at these numbers. Okay, I've got one Xbox Series X in my house. I have three of these. Three, three Series S's in this house right now. My daughter downstairs has one. My other little daughter has one. And I got one right here for the studio. So that makes that a three to one margin. So... I mean, you could even say if, if there's 8 million Series X's out there, then there's 
what is that? 8 and 8, 16, 16. That's 24, 24 million Series S. No, I'm just joking. There's not that many. But you can look at those numbers and you can be like, wow. If Xbox is happy that this is the fastest and the best they've ever sold, I would put those numbers like i would i'm i'm gonna say anywhere from 12 to 18 i'm gonna say anywhere from 12 to 18 million xbox consoles have been produced and shipped from the factories to date within that year um a lot of those are going to be the series s the one that's a lot easier to build and get parts for and manufacture i would say there's got to be at least at least 8 million xbox series s's or x's so why are we talking about this and why did i just waste five whole minutes of talking about that in in the background well it appears that sony has finally decided like wow man maybe we should have taken them seriously they're turning back on the playstation 4 line they're, they're going to keep it going oh well no I'll turn it back on i mean it was going all the way through 2021 they're going to keep it going for the rest of 2022 and their reasoning was their reasoning is to keep people in our ecosystem that's not the kind of sentence you would say if you weren't worried about xbox series s taking away some of what you got now let's look at this okay let's look at this aliens fire team elite 60 frames a second art of rally 60 frames a second assassin's creed valhalla 60 frames a second battlefield 2042 60 frames a second call of duty world of war or Call of Duty Black Ops, 60 FPS. Chivalry 2, 60 FPS. Descender, 60 FPS. Crisis, 60 FPS. Crisis 3 Remastered, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. Or maybe that one's 30. Maybe, maybe that one's 30. 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60 FPS, 60 FPS. I, I don't know if that one is. 60 fps 60 fps dang 60 fps <laughs> yep 60 fps 60 fps 30 fps with an unlocked frame rate that gets anywhere from 45 up to 60 fps mass effect 60 fps ori 60 fps uh mxgp 21 60 fps 60 fps moto gp 21 supercross 60 fps the show 60 fps Flight Simulator is 30 FPS. Uh, Outriders, 60 FPS. Psychonauts, 60 FPS. Resident Evil Village, 60 FPS. Riders Republic, 60 FPS. Rims Racing, I believe that one might still be 30 FPS. Rocket Leave, I have not, I've yet to turn that one on and, and actually see, but I think that one is running 60 FPS. Um, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, <coughs> I believe that one is running at 60 FPS or 30 FPS. That one's probably 30 FPS. Uh, Breakpoint is 30 FPS. Tales of a Rise, 60 FPS. Rogue, Rogue Squadron, 60 FPS. Sniper Elite 4, 60 FPS. Sea of Thieves, 60 FPS. Walking Zombie 2, 60 FPS. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, 60 FPS. WRC 10, 60 FPS. Uh, Zombie Army 4, 60 FPS. This has actually got 120 FPS mode. There's a couple in there that's got those. So now let's go down to my full library and look at these real quick. Okay, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 60 FPS. Set of Corsa Competizione, 60 FPS. Battle or Borderlands 3, 60 FPS. Call of Duty Vanguard, 60 FPS. House of Ashes, I believe that one's 60 or 30 FPS on, on on everything. To be completely honest with you, it kind of felt like it was 30 FPS when I was playing it on Series X. Uh, Dauntless, 60 FPS. Dead by Daylight, 60 FPS. Death's Door, 60 FPS uh destiny 2 60 fps devil may cry 5 i already told you it was 60 fps uh f1 2021 60 fps elder scrolls 60 fps doom eternal is 60 fps dirt 5 60 fps and 120 fps modes um i think i already told you far cry f this is showing everything i still got up there greedfall 60 fps forza horizon 4 still 30 fps uh immortal phoenix rising is 60 fps it takes two is running at 60 fps judgment has a 60 fps mode lost judgment 2 has a 60 fps mode life for strange 60 fps madden 21 is 60 fps do you get where i'm going with this mortal kombat 60 fps metro exodus 60 fps <clears throat> 
No Man's Sky, 60 FPS. Do, do, do you get where I'm going with this? Sherlock Holmes, Chapter 1, 60 FPS. Is it a stable 60 FPS? No, it's a little bit. It definitely needs an update. There's a little bit going on. Star Wars Fallen Order, 60 FPS. Do you see where I'm going with this, though? This console runs these games at 60 FPS all day long. All of them. Right here, WRC9, 60 FPS. I have put a lot of work into testing these. Testing these. Like a Dragon has a 60 FPS mode on here as well. I've been testing these games and looking at them and playing them from a, from a gamer point of view so that I can bring you the coverage on these. I've been sitting here and I'm telling you on this 1440p monitor, looking at these side by side, looking at these two consoles side by side, wow, that experience looks exactly like that experience on my 4K TV. That's weird because that's not 4K, that's... That's that's 1440p, but but wait, it's on a 1440p monitor, so it looks really sharp, just like that one looks on the 4K TV. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I mean. They are worried about this $300 1440p console that can do 60 frames a second because you know what next gen really is. It, it yeah, I mean it's part visuals. It definitely is part visuals and part you know ray tracing and all of that stuff. But what matters most this generation was the full-blown push for 60 to 120 frames a second. And Xbox Series S is, what? They're delivering that? They're delivering that? Yeah, some games are going to be, but here's the thing. Everybody's like, oh, man, they don't even run at native 1080p or whatever. On a 1440p monitor, um, yeah, dude, I haven't really been able to notice that big of a discrepancy in visuals to date. I mean, yeah, you can tell when everything is 1440p because it looks really, really sharp and really crisp like it does on a 4K TV when it's 4K. But like say like say your your image on the 4K TV is 1800p. It looks a little bit softer. Going from 1440p to 1080p is not... Is, 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 a, is exactly the same size of jump as you would be going from there to there, but there's so many more pixels that it's like, oh man, it's not like that big of a drop. It really doesn't look that bad. Going from 1080p to 720p, if you're going all the way from 1440p down to 720p, yeah, you're definitely going to notice that a little bit more. It's going to look a lot softer, but <clears throat> the pixel density in a 1440p monitor is is better than the pixel density in a 4k tv if that makes any sense it still looks rather sharp if you have an xbox series s i highly recommend a 1440p monitor because you will get the best <clears throat> the ultimate best experience that you're going to get most of these games that i've been playing on this series s and you you saw it you see my collection man i got games that go all the way back to assassin's creed valhalla assassin's creed valhalla Oh, uh, did I take that card out? Oh, I had that card out for a minute, but Assassin's Creed Valhalla. What the freak? Oh, it's got to read my card. But Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this game came out on your last gen Xbox One X. It did. I played it on Xbox One X. This game looks better and runs better on the Xbox Series S. It runs at 60 frames a second. You have two modes. You have a 1440p 30 frames a second mode, or you have a, a dynamic 1440p at 30 or 60 frames a second, and you get to play that. You get to experience that. And I'm telling you, on this on this 1440p monitor, it looks like it looks as good as it looks on my 4K TV. That's what I'm talking about. These guys on Twitter are trying to tell me that. Oh, well, Digital Foundry said, Digital Foundry said, <clears throat> Digital Foundry has said multiple times on their show that the 1440p console is not the console for Digital Foundry. But they were like, oh my gosh, dude, did you see what the PlayStation 4 Pro did with its checkerboard rendering? I mean, you're, the four, this, this console right here is far more powerful than the PlayStation 4 Pro. And uh, gosh dang, imagine, imagine if Xbox was like, yeah, you know what, let's just checkerboard everything to 4K. <laughs> then, then, it would, then it would be a 4K TV. But you've got things like direct ML that are coming. You've got variable refresh rate. You've got, you've got uh, FPS boost, quick resume. All of those things that are in there, velocity architecture, all of the stuff, all of the tech, all of the, all of the software, 
you know, that, that's designed for next gen to give you a next gen experience at a 1080p to 1440p range. Are you going to drop below those numbers? Yeah, dude, I drop below 4K on my Series X all the time. And my PlayStation 5 rarely ever hits 4K on anything. So, like, what are we worried about? Like, you got dynamic resolution. When you hear Digital Foundry or somebody be like, oh, well, it drops down to, like, 564p. Your eye's not going to notice that. It, it's so fast that that drops per frame and back right up that, that you, never pers- you never really notice that. Look... Ask yourself this right now, because because we've all been watching Digital Foundry for a long time, right? How many times have you ever seen the resolution drop from 4K to 1440p? Like seriously, I can, how many times have you ever perceived that? Look how far I sit away from my TV. Do you ever really notice it? Why all of a sudden push for Digital Foundry to not talk about resolution anymore when they're doing cross compat? Why don't, why don't they want to talk about that no more, you know? I'll tell you why. Because the PlayStation 5 is not going to hit that. As much as we as much as much we hate to admit it, dude, Digital Foundry is probably definite. Like, a lot of their a lot of their subscribers are probably PlayStation fans. They're, they're probably PlayStation fans. They probably get a lot of back, you know, a lot of backlash. And I, and I get it, man. They're, they're, they're there to make money. I mean, are they... I, I don't discredit their work. They do do good work. They do find out stuff. You know, they do they do put in the work. They do figure stuff out. But the only thing that really feels is the console wars. Is it a bad thing that Sony is going to continue producing PlayStation 4s? No. Is, do you really think that people are going to buy a PlayStation 4 over an Xbox Series S? I, I don't. I mean, that would be crazy. I hope they watch this channel and they're like, oh, wait a minute. You are getting a 100% you you're you're getting the best experience that you can get on series s with freaking uh, oh yeah let's just go ahead and start these i was gonna start it before but you're getting a 60 frames a second like we're gonna look at this just for a couple minutes we're gonna round this video out about 20 minutes okay because this is just a, a ramble type deal but it's interesting that playstation 5 you know there's why is there such i mean look at that look at that freaking look at that beautiful did you ever see that much vegetation in any of the other assassin creed games from last generation look at that can i tell that that's 1080p on this monitor no does it look as sharp and as clean as it does on my 4k yeah it really does i do not feel like this is a lesser experience <clears throat> let's put it this way i do not feel like this is a lesser experience on this 1440p monitor than what i would be getting on my 4k tv like this still looks beautiful it still retains all of that um i think <clears throat> i think the i think the vegetation is a little less dense but it's not that i mean like look you can see like you can see like flat patches you know here a little bit i mean but you're still getting that on the on the bigger consoles too like you are definitely getting a pretty comparable experience like this is i use assassin's creed valhalla a lot because this is one of the games that first originally came out this is one of the ones that digital foundry was like oh yeah it's running better on the playstation 5 and i've got it on playstation 5 too and one of these days i'm going to do a comparison video of all three of these as soon as i can figure out how to do like an exact freaking walk so i can show you guys exactly i'm gonna do that i'm still learning how to do those i'm still learning how to do comparison videos i'm trying to get better at it um it, like i said time constraints but look at this look at the veg look at the look at the detail in this ground i don't feel like i'm missing anything from the series s or from the series x version i'm getting every single thing i'm getting all the all the all the texture in the dirt in the ground like i'm getting every single thing i was getting on the other one so when i'm playing it on my series s I really don't feel like I'm getting a. I, I don't feel like I'm getting a lesser experience than what I would be on on my PlayStation Five or my Xbox One X. To be completely honest with you, I do not feel like this is, any way, shape, or form, a worse experience than what I've already gotten, than than what I've been playing since since I got my Series X and I got my Series X day one. When I'm playing, when I'm playing this, when I'm running towards these, towards the ground, and I'm watching the grass draw in at the same distance that it does on my Series X and my PlayStation Five, that makes me happy. That makes me freaking happy. I'm like, wow. I do not feel. Literally, I'm telling you this from the bottom as a gamer to another gamer. I do not feel like this is an inferior experience. I do not feel that way. 
I, I don't. I, I, I feel like if if this is what I had to play this on when I first got it, I would have been happy. I'd have been like, whoa, this is freaking phenomenal because look at what you're getting. You're getting more vegetation gen on gen. You're getting a little bit better. You know, you're getting a better draw distance. You're definitely getting a higher, a higher, uh, a higher um, quality character in this game. I love Assassin's Creed games, so this right here is like a, f a focal point for me. That's why I do talk about this a lot. Assassin's Creed is one of my one of my main games. Like I will continue to buy these every single time. You are still getting all of the geometry and everything else that you get on the uh, on on the Xbox Series X. Um, you're still getting, you know, higher resolutions to where it looks pretty dang good. You're still getting the 60 freaking frames a second on an Assassin's Creed game. A stable 60 frames a second on an Assassin's Creed game. In an Assassin's Creed open world with the most fidelity we've ever seen in an Assassin's Creed freaking game to date. Let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in for a minute. I am telling you straight up that when you're playing games like Halo Infinite at, at, at 60 frames a second, it, it feels amazing. I can literally go from playing Halo Infinite on my 4K over to this, and I don't feel like I'm getting an inferior experience. I do not feel that way. I like to play that one at the, uh, at the 60 FPS mode uh on on both of them so i definitely feel like my experience translates exactly from that to this perfectly like i don't feel like i'm at a disadvantage playing halo infinite on my series s when i play games you know when i play other games i don't feel like i'm getting I, I do not feel like i'm negatively impacted whatsoever i mean look at this ground right here now i did a comparison video showing you guys you know ghost of Tsushima. And everybody was kind of, I mean, some people are a little upset about that. And I'm like, come on, guys. You guys sit and say the Xbox Series S is, S is trash all day. But look at this. Look at this thing, man. Running this Assassin's Creed open world with better textures, better looking, you know, trees, you know, better looking. In my opinion, um, almost, I mean, like vegetation is, is pretty freaking close. <laughs> like the vegetation, the trees, the density it it it's fine like it it holds up extremely well to a first party sony quality game in terms of <laughs> you know what i mean like this looks pretty freaking good when when you when you have that compared to that running this on series s this run this this holds up really well on running it next to you know my playstation 4 or my series x as well like it it just does so i i I just wanted to make this video to say that, like, I, I understand why Sony's doing what they're doing, but dang, man, that literally just proves that your Xbox Series S is one heck of a beast, man. You're getting a steal. 300 bucks, man. 300 bucks, you get a freaking next-gen console. Sony's so worried about it. They are putting out more PlayStation 4s to try to keep people tr um, in the PlayStation experience. My best, my best advice to you, if you've already got a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro, grab yourself a Series S. If you can't find a five, get a Series S, um, run it through a 1080p monitor or a 1440p monitor. And, and see, here's the beauty with this. This is why I'm telling you this, because if you're still planning on getting a PlayStation 5, hooking that play, hooking my PlayStation up to the 1440p monitor gives me, I feel, a much better experience because most of the games running at 60 frames a second are dropping down in resolution to lower resolution. So it actually looks better on the 1440p monitor than it does on the four, on the 4K TV. So you can kill two birds with one stone by getting that 1440p monitor and you will be able to enjoy fully all of the features that come with, you know, both of these next gen consoles, you know, the the 120 fps, the um um variable refresh rate, all of that. All of that's going to be included in a monitor. And, like you can get a monitor and a Series S for 700 bucks. $700. For $900 you could throw in a 1 terabyte card. And then you'll you'll be set and ready to go when you finally do find that PlayStation 5. So, yeah, this is definitely to help you and to to give Xbox a pat on the back because, yeah, dude, this is freaking awesome, man. Xbox has really knocked it out of the park this generation. And <laughs> I see the momentum building and getting better every single day. It just gets better. And PlayStation looks more and more like they have egg on their face. 
you know, with the lofty, we believe in generations, and now everything's going cross gen. They're they're bringing out PlayStation Four back to to try to you know stem the flow of people going to Xbox. Whatever Xbox is doing, it's working, and it's working really well, and it's got PlayStation starting to make moves that that there I can guarantee you you're going to have a PlayStation Five Mini probably fairly soon because this is an untapped market that Microsoft is freaking right there positioned to really get because everybody that wants a, a, a game a Nintendo Switch they're perfectly okay with the Switch they're going to be 100% okay with an Xbox One X or Series S 100% fine with that and with Game Pass how can you deny that value PlayStation fanboys are worried but regular people regular gamers like you and me this is a good deal for you. This is this is this is an amazing this is an amazing deal and I hope that you take advantage of this. So, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.